Sit down, Lane. Sit down. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, I'm rather surprised that you're coming here. It's more than a social visit, Jeff. Is your wife here? She's in the house somewhere. Oh, what can I do for you? My fiancé sent me. He'd like you and Mrs. Dillon to come over to his apartment Saturday evening. He's having a little party. How oh, utterly charming. Tell him for me that Mrs. Dillon and I consider it a privilege to be able to refuse Mr. Stuart Worthington's invitation. Oh, Jeff, please don't feel that way about Stuart. Remember... I'll be there. Well, now, that might influence me very much. <laughs> he really has an unusual party planned. He has a magician who's going to do the famous birdcage trick. Oh, I've seen it. You've seen me. You were almost ready to go to the party a moment ago. I haven't seen enough of you, Lynn. I doubt if I ever could. Um, I'm not crowding you on this settee, am I? Well, you are a little, but... I'm not sure I'm on. Oh, very pretty picture. Uh, well, uh, oh, don't bother getting up, Jeff. I'm only your wife. Elaine just came over to invite us to a party at Worthington's uh, Saturday night. And she's done it? Yes, I have. In that case, I'll see you to the door. This way, Miss Williams. Then I I'll see you both Saturday night. This way, Miss Williams. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Lane. Yeah. Good night, Mrs. Dillon. Jeff, don't you think this is going a bit far? You and that girl in my own house? Oh, you don't understand it. Oh, the... wives never do, husbands prefer to believe. But I understand quite a bit. For instance, you're in love with that girl. I wouldn't say that. I, I'm just giving in practice, that's all. You do anything to get her away from Worthington. I know you would. That is, if you could think of anything other than what tie you'll wear to the party. I might surprise you one of these days. You'll make me laugh. Edna, darling... Lane Williams mentioned that there was going to be a magician at the party who was going to do the famous disappearing birdcage trick. That gave me a very good idea. If you thought of it, it came from a very strange place. Edna, darling, what Lane told me gives me an idea that will let me commit murder and get away with it. What about it, Scotty? What about it? What am I going to do about Worthington, you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. It ain't like you let a guy welch on a bet, Scotty. No, that's true enough. I'm not letting Worthington get away with it. Don't worry, Professor. Oh, I ain't worrying, Scotty. I just want to know, that's all. Listen, Professor, Worthington is throwing a big party tomorrow night. How would you like to go? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody invited me. I'm inviting you to attend in my place. Gee, you're not invited either. No, but I still want you to go. Professor, you and a friend are cordially invited to attend a party being given tomorrow night by Stuart Worthington. Gosh, that's swell. What'll I wear? Yeah, it's a formal party, I understand. Dinner jacket will be all right, I guess. I ain't got a dinner jacket. And you said I was invited with a friend. Well, I ain't got a friend either. You will have tomorrow night. A forty-five caliber friend. Yeah? Worthington's gonna throw the party. But you're gonna throw lead. Philo Vance speaking. Vance? Yes? This is Lane Williams. Do you know me? I don't think so. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm engaged to Stuart Worthington. You know him, don't you? Slightly. What's the trouble, Miss Williams? Well, I don't know yet. Only I'm sure there's going to be trouble. Stuart's made a lot of enemies, and he's gone out of his way to hurt certain people who won't take hurting. Who, for instance? Well, Jeff and Edna Dillon. Either one or both of the Dillons is liable to explode at any moment. Well, just keep Worthington out of the way of the explosion, and nobody will be hurt. Vance, listen to me. It isn't only the Dillons. There's a gambler named Scott whom Stuart has been baiting, and I heard Scott threaten my fiancé only this morning. That's why I called you, Vance. Stuart's giving a party tonight. Please come and bring the district attorney with you. Well, I'll ask Mr. Markham if he can make it, Miss Williams. Who else will be there? 
I don't have a list of the guests, but one thing I'm sure of. One of them will be a murderer before the night's over. <laughs> Oh, let's get as far away from the piano as possible, darling. Our host is about to play. I'm surprised at you, Jeff. Lane Williams is by the piano, and you want to move away? Well, over here by the window is as far as we can get, I guess. That it's open. It's very stuffy in here. What is? The air, the people, or the conversation? All three. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, the other night you said something about committing murder and getting away with it. You were kidding, of course. Was I? You have to be, for a lot of reasons. One of them is you haven't the nerve to do anything more strenuous than combing your hair, unless a beautiful girl is involved. That's what you think. Well, let's pretend we're interested in what Stuart's going to play. I'm not that good an actress, but I'll try. <laughs> He's just put out all the lights in the room, and there's just that spotlight on the piano. What a ham. Oh, shh. I can. This is District Attorney Markham. We'll take over now. Everybody, please stay exactly where you are. Markham, yes, Vance. Stay with me. This might be one of the quickest cases we've ever been on. I hope so. Mr. Vance, the shot came from over there. I, I practically saw the flash of the gun. It, it came from that direction over there by the window where Mr. and Mrs. Dillon are standing. Oh, well, that simplifies things a bit. Markham, that window is open. Do me a favor. See what you can find out about the ground underneath the window. Perhaps the shot came from outside. I'll be right back, Vance. Now, listen, everybody. Please. A murder has been committed. For the time being, at least, I represent the police. I've been told that the shot came from the direction of the window. Do you all agree it did? Mr. Dillon, stay where you are. I'm coming over to you. Well, come on. Who's stopping you? My name is Philo Vance. I'm here tonight because I understood there was trouble between you and Worthington. I guess it might be called trouble. I... I always regarded it more as a clash of personalities. <laughs> oh, here's my wife, Mr. Vance. How do you do? How do you do? Everybody seems to agree that the flash of the gun came from over here by the window, Dylan. Are you carrying a gun? Look for yourself. He's got a gun, Vance. He has to have a gun. Either he or his wife did this. Oh, Miss Williams is a rather hysterical girl, isn't she, darling? Terribly. The gun is still on them someplace. They didn't have a chance to get rid of it. Look for it, Vance. I will, Miss Williams. I've gone over Mr. Dillon's pockets pretty well. He has no gun. Mrs. Dillon, I'll call for a police matron and have you searched. Vance, you can see I couldn't possibly have a gun on me. Yes, that's true. But apparently, one of you had a gun, unless the shot came from outside. And in that instance, please accept my apologies. I saw the flash, I tell you, Vance. It came from over here by the window. It still could have come from outside, Miss Williams, providing the killer stood at the window. If I remember correctly, there's a garden of some kind outside this window. If anybody stood there, and he'd have to be there to fire the shot... His footprints would be pretty discernible, I'd say. Right now, what you say... Well, Vance, I've just been outside. Yes, Markham, what did you find? Nothing. There's a stretch of soft ground eight feet wide, right underneath the window. If anybody stood out there by the window to fire the shot, he'd have left footprints. And there aren't any? No. Well, this is something. A man is shot to death in this room, and almost as he was killed, we came in. Nobody moved, and everybody agrees the shot came from this window... Yet we can't find a gun on the two people in front of the window. And there's indisputable evidence that nobody stood outside and fired the shot. We have a mystery, don't we, Vance? Markham, my friend, there is an understatement if I ever heard one. Sit down, Miss Williams. Sit down. I can't, Scott. I wanted to talk to you. I didn't dare use the phone, so I came down here. I'm glad you did. Everything go off without a hitch tonight? Worthington's dead, if that's what you mean. That's what I meant, all right. You set the thing up just the way I told you to. Sure. I called Vance, told him about you and about the Dillons, and told him what time to get there. Everything went off just like clockwork. As he opened the door, the shot was fired. Hmm. When I plan a thing, I plan it good. Yes, you do. 
My friend, the professor, did his work pretty well. Glad you told Vance about me. It put you in the clear, and I have a perfect alibi for the time of the shooting. Well, I guess that's all we have to discuss, isn't it? Not quite. Oh? I had Worthington killed because you tipped me off that he'd made a will leaving you a big hunk of dough. That's one of the provisions under which you were going to marry him, wasn't it? Yes. You promised me $10,000 for the job. That's right. Now, that's very good, Miss Williams. But in lieu of what you're getting, we'll just consider that a down payment. Okay? Jeff, I demand to know how you did it. How did you kill Worthington? Edna, uh, darling, don't bother me, please. I want to get this dinner jacket off and relax for a little while before going to sleep. You said the birdcage magic trick gave you an idea. Apparently it was a good idea and it worked. You killed Worthington while I was standing next to you and I have no idea how you did it. I'm pretty clever then, eh? I'm a little scared about the whole thing. What'd you do with the gun? Who said there was a gun? Oh, you're not talking to Philo Vance now, Jeff. There had to be a gun. It had to be fired by you. Yet I never saw it in your hand. Maybe the shot did come from the window. You heard Markham tell Vance it couldn't have. Nobody could have stood outside that window and not left footprints in the ground. You did it, didn't you? Oh, stop it, will you, Edna? This is getting boring. Here, hang up my dinner jacket. All right, but... Uh, Jeff. What is it? What's that strapped to your back? What does it look like? A gun. That's the gun that killed Worthington. Naturally. How did it get where it is? It snapped back. You see these thick pieces of rubber tubing? Yes, they're dangling from that contrivance you're wearing in back. Well, that tubing was down my sleeve with a gun attached to it. Oh. I had the gun palmed in my hand. And after I shot, I simply released it and it went up my sleeve and wound up in back of me where you see it now. It was the disappearing birdcage trick that gave me the idea. No wonder Philo Vance couldn't find the gun. Who would think of looking for a gun there? All right, now that you know the whole story, perhaps you wouldn't think I'm so stupid. Hey, dear? Well, it's hard for me to believe. So don't. To think I was standing right next to you, never saw the gun, never saw you shoot. That's right. And darling, when you can be fooled, anybody can be fooled. What do you think of your husband now? I think I like him more than I ever did before. And I also think I'm more afraid of him than I ever was before. This is District Attorney Markham. Our present murder case opened with the killing of Stuart Worthington while he was seated at the piano in his living room. We know the shot that killed him came from the direction of the window, but neither of the two people in front of the window had a gun, nor could they have gotten rid of any gun. I personally investigated the ground outside the window and could find no marks or footprints, although if the shot came from outside, there would have to be footprints. This is the situation facing us as Philo Vance details his final... I think I know how Jeff Dillon could have shot Worthington if he shot him and have gotten rid of the gun, Markham. What do you mean, if he shot him, Vance? There are certain facts that are obvious. Either Dillon shot him, Mrs. Dillon did, or the shot came from outside the window. Nobody could have stood outside. Mrs. Dillon couldn't have got rid of a gun. But then by the same token, neither could Jeff Dillon. You're a little confused, Markham, but I know what you mean. Uh... Jeff might have killed Worthington if he knew anything about parlor magic. What kind of a gun was used? A forty-five. Why? Oh, in that case, perhaps that theory of mine wouldn't work. Will you stop being so mysterious, Vance? What theory? The parlor magic trick. Ever see a magician make a bird cage disappear? Many times. The cage divides in half, flattens out, and each half goes up a sleeve, doesn't it? Up the sleeve and behind his back, under the coat where it isn't noticeable. You see, it's attached by rubber tubing, which snaps it back when pressure is released. Now, Dylan could have done the same thing with a gun. Held it in his hand, fired it, let go, and up the sleeve it went. Hmm... See what you mean. Well, I imagine we'd better go see the Dillons, don't you? Yes, and I hope when we meet Mr. Dillon, I'll have something up my sleeve, too. I'm glad you think I did a good job, Scotty. Very glad. You did a very good job, Professor, and I'm proud of you. Uh, and I've paid you. 
Only from what I read in the papers, you couldn't have stood outside the window. Where were you? In the room? Nope. I was outside. You must have been pretty close to the window if people inside saw the flash. I was. Right at the window. And you left no marks on the ground. How did you do it? Gee, I'm... I'm sorry, Scotty, but that I figured out for myself. If you don't mind, I... I don't want to tell you. Do you mind? No, I guess not. Uh... Where's the gun you used? Here it is. A forty-five. You want to get rid of it? Of course. Let me have it. Sure. Here you are. Professor? Yeah? What did you ask me just now? Huh? About the gun? I asked you if you wanted to get rid of it. That's what I thought. Well, I told you a lie. <laughs> did you, boss? Yeah. I don't want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of you. It's you, Mr. Vance. Come in. Thank you. Is your husband at home? Why, uh, no, he isn't. Would I do? Not for what I had in mind, Mrs. Dillon. You don't make a very good murder suspect. I've heard you were very brilliant. Perhaps you are. And perhaps it's just that Jeff isn't as smart as he thinks. Mrs. Dillon, where is your husband? Out. Mr. Markham went down to his club to look for him. If he's there, Markham will bring him back here. I can hardly wait to see him. You're a strange person. Yes? You'll stick by your husband in a murder case, probably alibi for him if you have to, but apparently you're not in love with him. No, I'm not. But I've tried for years to get him to do something, to do anything that would make me proud of him. And now, I think he's done it. You're proud of him for killing a man? Only if he gets away with it. Vance? Over here, Markham. I'm with Mrs. Dillon. I found her husband, as you can see. Glad you did. Come on, get in there. Please sit down, Mr. Dillon. That's very nice. I'm invited to sit down in my own home. What's up, Vance? Dillon, did you ever see a magician do the birdcage trick? I thought this was too good to last. Thank you, Mrs. Dillon. Now, Dillon, don't make me repeat the question. You talk to him if you like, Vance. I'll be back in a minute. I want to go to the bedroom a minute. Excuse me, please. Well, Dylan? I've seen the birdcage trick, Vance. Why? You know where the cage disappears to? <laughs> Not me. I'm one of those people who like to be fooled. I never bothered to figure out how it was done. That's possible, of course, but I believe uh, that... Vance, you were asking about the birdcage trick. It worked with heavy rubber tubing like this, didn't it? Why, oh. yes. And that's a professional disappearing harness you have in your hand, Mrs. Dillon. Where'd you get it? My husband. And are you... Shut up. My husband wore this the night of the party, Vance. Attached to the tubing, as you can see, was a gun. It's in the dresser drawer now. Shall I get it? You don't have to bother right now. I imagine that's right. We have a very good case against your husband, Mrs. Dillon, and we're indebted to you for your help. He just couldn't do anything. Not a thing. I'm better off rid of it. I'm not sure you are yet. Why not? I showed you how I got rid of the gun that killed Worthington. It went up his sleeve and wound up in this uh, harness in back of him. Yes, that's true enough. You did. Only, you didn't kill Worthington, did you, Dylan? Who says I didn't? I do. Oh, wait a minute, Vance. We came down here to find the device you outlined to me, the birdcage apparatus. We found it. Dylan doesn't deny he killed Worthington. But you doubt it. Why? The most simple and obvious of reasons, Markham. This device would work with any small caliber gun. But Worthington was killed with a 45. A 45 is much too large to go up a sleeve. No, Markham, I'm afraid we'll have to look somewhere else for our murderer. Miss Williams, you told me that there was a Mr. Scott with whom your former fiancé, Mr. Worthington, was having trouble. That's right, Dad. Well, that's the reason I asked you to come down to my office. Where can Scott be reached? He has an office, I think. It's in the book. Oh, excuse me, please. Excuse me. Hello. This is Markham Vance. Yes? You ever hear of a character named Professor Blake? Uh, I think I met him once. Why? Well, we know he worked for that gambler you mentioned to me at the beginning of this birdcage case, fellow named Scott. Yes. Well, we just found Blake. He'd been shot and dumped in an alley. He lived quite a while after he was shot, apparently, because some people heard him moaning and called the police. I just thought you might want to know. I most certainly do. I think this ties up very nicely, Markham. 
Leave everything to me, my friend. I'm going to make one other telephone call to a person who won't want to talk to me at all. But then again, he won't know it's me. Who did you say this was? Me. Professor. You gotta help me. Where are you? The shack on Water Street. I'm hurt. Bad. Boss, but you didn't kill me. Get me a doctor, please. You got a lot of nerve calling me. Either come down here with a doctor or I go to the police with the whole story. Pretty disreputable looking shack, Vance. What are we doing here in the dark? Waiting. I know that, but for what? For the man who killed Professor Blake. Scott? That's right. You know he killed Blake? Definitely. I don't know how you could know. You haven't seen Blake's body. All you know about this second murder is what I told you on the telephone. That's correct. But I still know Blake was killed by Scott. And you'll know it too when he comes here. Do you really think Scott will be silly enough to show up? Of course. Why shouldn't he? He thinks Blake is alive. He knows that if Blake talks, we'll grab him. But you see, he shh, doesn't... Shh, shh. Somebody's coming. Get over by the door. Right. Professor. Professor, where are you? Uh, over here. Uh, Put a light on. I can't see you. Did you bring... Well, my shot didn't kill you, did it? No. It should have. I've got to do this all over again. Where are you? Where are you? I hear you're moving around, Blake, but you can't move very far. You hurt too bad. I'll get you as soon as I find a match. No, no. Oh, over there, are you? I can only risk one shot, so I want to make sure. After all, Professor, you shouldn't feel too badly about being shot. You knocked off Worthington, didn't you? You hired me to do it? Of course. And now I'm paying you off. Now, where are you? Here. Over here. Get this over with. You bet I will. So you're in this corner, huh? Well, it'll all be over. In and... no time, Scott. Hey, who are you? <laughs> Better hit him again, Markham. He's tough. Get <laughs> Well, Vance, I rather enjoyed that. So, we have the mastermind that plotted Worthington's death right here, eh? Apparently. And the actual murderer, Blake, is dead. Vance, I'd like to know how Blake did that shooting without being in the room. You remember, of course, if he shot from outside the window, we'd have seen footprints. Yes, I remember. The way to do that is simple, Markham. Take this Scott downtown and then meet me at the Worthington house and I'll show you how that was done. <laughs> you carry that ladder, Vance? Oh, it's no trouble, Markham. Not very heavy. This is what Professor Blake used the night Worthington was shot. He carried this ladder across the lawn, as I'm doing now, and over to the window. Well, here we are. What now? Well, next he rested the ladder on the ground, leaned it against the window, climbed it, and shot but in that case, there'd be ladder marks on the soft ground, Vance, and there weren't any. I'll move this ladder back on the lawn. <clears throat> there. Now I'll lean it against the window, like this. Now, see why there were no marks? Well, of course. The ladder was resting on the lawn. After he fired from the window, Blake climbed off the ladder, carried it back to the Worthington garage, and fled. That's right. We now know that he was working for Scott. Who, in turn, was working for the girl, Lane Williams. Hmm. That I never even suspected. I'll tell you a little secret. Neither did I. But like all rats, Scott didn't want to sink alone. When he knew we had him cornered, he wanted to drag Miss Williams with him. That's right. Of course, you never explained about the Dillons. Why didn't Jeff Dillon deny he killed Worthington? Why didn't he deny it? Because he wanted to be a hero in his wife's eyes, Markham. And he thought she'd like the fact that he'd done something unusual, like killing a man. 
Well, that's hard to understand. I know, but the fact remains that it's so. He admitted it to me. He said he wanted to get in the middle of a murder. And for a while, he certainly was in the middle, too. But that isn't important now. Now that we're at the end of the Birdcage murder case. <laughs>